1964, the tribute was once hailed as the best Beatles tribute on earth by Rolling Stone magazine, and they've been spending the last 38 plus years maintaining that title playing worldwide, to the delight of Beatle fans everywhere. Hello, my name is Mark Benson, and uh, I work with a band called 1964 The Tribute, and uh, this is my 38th year doing this show. My name is Jimmy Poe, and uh, I played George in the group 1964 for about 12 years. I did that. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Mac Ruffing, and I play Paul in 1964 The Tribute. It'll be, it's just over 10 years I've been in the group. Hi, I'm Joe Bologna. Uh, I got into music when I was about five. The reason I got into music was I saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show on February 9th, 1964. I was living in Miami, Florida. I told my parents that night, that's what I want to do. I want to have, be on stage playing guitar and have girls screaming at me. My first introduction to the Beatles was as a three-year-old toddler. I have two older sisters that were teenagers at the time, and I just couldn't get away from it, you know. It's funny, I had played music through my teen years and my early 20s, and then I got a life. I got a job and a wife and a home and kids. I had a job at the post office. I was a mailman, but things got a little dangerous. So I left that job and got an office job, but my pay scale went down. So I was looking for a part-time weekend job. And I lo looked in the paper and it said, Ringo Wanted must sing as good or as bad as Ringo. I said, I can do this. We never, ever, ever thought this was gonna be something that we would do full-time or we hadn't really intended it to be full-time. We thought this was gonna be a baby boomer thing and that we'd do, you know, a class party or a class reunion or, you know, an oldies party or something like that, just once every six months, just at home in Ohio. And by the second year, it was full-time. We played colleges coast to coast in uh, America and Canada for about nine or 10 years. And that opened up uh, the performing arts centers and the theaters and places like uh, Carnegie Hall and Shea Stadium and Red Rocks Amphitheater and uh, the Doval Hotel in Miami Beach. I never in a million years would dream that years later I would end up in a tribute band playing one of the Beatles. So I'm naturally right-handed. I learned to switch over to left hand on the bass to, for the look, you know, because Paul is left-handed. And so it took a long time and uh, eventually got the hang of it and been doing it since, and it makes a big difference for the visual look. 1964, the tribute decided early on they would replicate the Beatles' style from their first album up to Revolver. This era had the most significant impact on their own musical development. Fortunately, most members were veterans of Beatles music from previous tribute groups and had many years of experience honing their craft. When we do these shows, people will come up to us and say, man, when you played Twist and Shout, I was back in seventh grade with this, my buddies or this girlfriend or whatever. And it's, it's a moment in their life that really stands out because of that song. We just uh, enjoy it, have a good time. The crowds know the music and love it. It never gets old for me. And sometimes the traveling does, but you know, that's another story. A good friend of ours uh, was the drummer for the Whites, that is uh, the house, uh, one of the house bands at the Grand Old Opry, and his good friend is Ricky Skaggs. So he brings Ricky to one of our shows, and I know Ricky's in the audience in Nashville, and I'm thinking, this isn't really the kind of show you ask someone to sit in with, so I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna let him enjoy the show. Just let him, let him go. And so, after the show, he comes backstage with this guitar case in his hands, and I'm thinking, ah, here he is with a guitar. And he goes, no, 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 I didn't bring this to sit in. I just wanted to show you because I thought you'd appreciate it. And he opens the case, and it's like a day it was made, new old stock, 1964, Gretsch Country Gentleman, like George Harrison played. So, I mean, it was really cool. And he had his uh, nine-year-old, ten-year-old son with him. And I reached in my pocket and gave him a guitar pick because it's just what I do. And his son looks at Ricky and goes, Dad, look, he gave me a guitar pick. And I'm like, Ricky, I know this is not how this is supposed to go. And he says, believe me, I'm just dad to him. And we're having a rehearsal one day and the drummer comes up to me and he says, hey, I'll give you $500 if the guy outside isn't George Martin. And I said, what's he doing out there? He said, well, he's buying tickets to our show. He's in a long line. I said, why would George Martin buy tickets to our stupid little Beatles show? 
And but so I believed him and I went out there and sure enough, it was George Martin. So I walked up to him. I said, Mr. Martin, are you really buying tickets for our show? And of course, he's real tall. And he says, you must play George. And I said, yes, I do. My name's Jimmy Poe. And he says, uh, yes, I was buying tickets for me and my two daughters. And I said, well, would you mind if I put you on the guest list instead? I, I have a feeling they'll, they'll put you on the guest list for free. And he says, oh, that would be lovely. I said, the only uh, favor I ask in return is that after the show, you come backstage and meet the rest of the guys in the dressing room. And he said, oh, of course. And so the next night, the show opens up and the curtain goes up and we're singing She Loves You. And we look down and right dead center in the third row is George Martin and he's standing here like this, looking at us. And the rest of the guys went, oh my God, it's George Martin. And so, you know, I looked down at my legs and my legs were shaking like this. And I thought, you know, he's gonna be here for two hours, so just relax. And he came upstairs to the dressing room and his two little daughters asked us for our autographs. It was embarrassing as you can be. And of course he said, there were times when I imagined you were, were, I was drifting off and I imagined you being the four lads. And we said, oh, wow, thank you very much. Uh, we did Broadway, that was pretty awesome. And uh, I ended up on top. <laughs> it's amazing. And I'm just glad I don't have to work for a living anymore. So, funny stories, I've got some, but they aren't appropriate. As any musician, uh, we're blessed that anybody wants to hear anything we do more than once. <laughs> so for people to keep coming back for 38 years to see this show is uh, quite a feather in the cap for us. And uh, we couldn't be more thankful that uh, this has lasted this long. <laughs>